use with alkyd paints. A nylon brush may be used with latex paints, or a polyester brush can be used with both alkyd and latex paints. As with brushes, select only top quality rollers and roller refills. The best roller frame to paint with has four or five sturdy wires that support the roller refill across the entire length to keep each roller stroke smooth and even. A high quality roller refill has a more even fiber length and it absorbs and distributes the paint in a consistently even film. Select a high pile or semi rough roller refill for use on deeply textured surfaces to allow the paint to seep into the crevices of the surface. Medium pile refills are commonly used for applying flat, satin, eggshell and semi-gloss finishes to most surfaces. And low pile or smooth roller refills are used when applying semi-gloss and gloss alkyd paints, providing a smooth, glass-like finish. A few additional tools you should purchase for the job include a paint tray and disposable tray liner. The jumbo size tray makes loading up the roller particularly easy. You should also have drop sheets, an extension pole, plus a few items necessary for repairing and preparing the surface before painting. Even if the paint you're buying is white, have it shaken up at the store so it's well mixed. Begin the project by moving all the furniture you can into the center of the room and covering it with a drop sheet so that it's out of your way and it's protected. Cover carpets where necessary also. Remove pictures and nails, switch plates and outlet covers, draperies and drapery rods, and tape around the handles of any doors that will be painted. Hammer in all nail pops and areas where picture hangers or nails have caused the surface to swell. Then fill in the indented areas. If using a powdered patching compound, mix it into a smooth paste or use a ready mixed patching compound. Using a putty knife or broad knife, apply the compound in one direction and scrape off the excess in the opposite direction. If the patch remains indented after it is dry, as most do, a second application of patching compound will be needed. Once all patches are thoroughly dry, all walls need to be lightly sanded with medium grade sandpaper to smooth out any bumps or unevenness in the paint surface and the patched areas. Using this sweeping motion allows you to sand all four walls in no time at all. Then quickly, but thoroughly, sand doors and trim so that the new paint will adhere well to the surface. Then wipe down the area with a damp sponge to remove the sanding dust. Also wipe away any dark or greasy marks using a household wall cleaner so that the marks don't bleed through the new paint. In kitchens and bathrooms where grease may be coating the walls, a more thorough cleaning may be required with a non-sudsing detergent such as grease off. Remove mildew with a mixture of half bleach and half water. The next step is to spot prime all patched areas with Color Your World Latex Primer to keep the top coat from being absorbed into the patching compound and creating a blotchy looking paint job. Primer should be used to coat the entire surface if the old color is very dark to keep it from showing through the new color. Wooden surfaces to be painted should be sanded smooth and primed with Alcott Primer to keep the wood fibers flat and smooth. Do-it-yourselfers who are finishing their basements or building drywall partitions need to properly finish the drywall seams before priming. Begin by filling in seams with drywall compound and a putty knife. When dry, apply another heavy coat of compound to which you apply a paper drywall tape. Bed the tape into the compound by pressing a very large broad knife or drywall knife over the tape. Also fill in indentations from the drywall screws. After this is dry, 
apply two separate skim coats over top of the tape and the screws to completely even out the surface. Finally, sand when dry using medium grade sandpaper and an extension pole sander making sure to leave the surface very smooth and even. Now you must prime the surface with Color Your World Latex Primer to keep the top coat from being absorbed into the surface of the drywall. It's now time to install your paint. Paint the ceiling first with Color Your World Velvet Pastels or Designer's Touch Splatter Resistant Ceiling Paint. After stirring the paint, working from the bottom upwards to evenly mix it, pour about half of the paint into your lined paint tray. This leaves the can less full so it's easier to dip the brush into and it allows enough paint in the tray in which to completely soak the roller. Begin by cutting in along the ceiling break where the roller won't reach using a light quick brush stroke and lots of paint. Don't worry about getting paint on the walls since it will be covered later. In fact, this way no area along the ceiling break will be left unpainted. The brush you use should be two and a half to three inches wide. An angled sash brush is perfect for cutting in and for painting trim. If there are any smoke detectors or fixtures on the ceiling, cut in around them also. On stippled ceilings, using a light bouncing brush stroke will enable the paint to get right into the crevices. Any masking tape used to protect fixtures should be removed immediately while the paint is still wet so it will not pull the paint off with it. When you come to roll on the paint, coat the roller thoroughly, then roll on the paint in just two or three quick strokes, then reload and paint the next section of the ceiling. Notice that you don't go back and forth over the same area over and over. This keeps the particles of stipple intact on stippled ceilings and it keeps you from spreading the paint too far, avoiding uneven paint coverage. Take note also that the roller is held almost directly overhead, moving it back and forth from side to side. This allows the arms to just support the roller easily. Too much effort is required if you extend the roller out in front of you, as the inexperienced painter is prone to do. To keep lap marks from appearing from a double thickness of paint in one area, be certain to finish the whole ceiling before taking a break. Painting window frames, doors and door frames is next. Baseboards, however, are left to the end. Once again, don't worry about the trim paint getting on the wall. You're supposed to do it that way. As always, use lots of paint and a good quality brush to give you a smooth finish. To paint raised sections of trim really quickly, pat the sides of the bristles along the raised area then smooth out the paint evenly. Flat doors are painted rapidly if done with a roller. Then brush out the paint so the finish is really smooth when dry. If slight ridges are visible in the paint while it is wet, these will smooth out as the paint dries. To paint panel doors, paint the paneled sections first, then the surrounding area. Once the trim and ceiling paints are dry, it's time to apply the wall paint. Just before cutting in the walls, use some of the paint to give a quick light coat to the primed areas so they will not show through the top coat. Now, cut in along the ceiling break, down the corners, and along the top of the baseboards. Jiggle the brush a little at the beginning of each stroke to fan out the bristles to reach right into the corners and edges neatly. The angled sash brush allows you to make a clean straight edge where the trim meets the wall. Note how the brush is held down low at its metal ferrule to give you greatest control of where you're putting the paint. Dip the bristles of your brush only about a third of the way into the paint and then tap the brush against the side of the container. Don't be afraid to use lots of paint whenever you're painting so the old color is completely covered. In some cases, a paint edger makes quick work of cutting in along the ceiling break and around door and window frames. Dip it only lightly into the paint, 
so the paint does not get onto the small wheels. And then run the top of the edger against the side of the paint tray after loading to prevent excess paint from running onto the ceiling. To avoid lap marks, cut in and then roll only one wall at a time. With a suitable roller refill and the extension handle attached, coat the roller with plenty of paint. Beginning at a corner, roll up and down from floor to ceiling only about two times per roller full of paint. Reload your roller and apply the paint in the same up and down fashion in the next area, rolling back into the area already painted to cover all areas. When you reach the end of the wall, without delay, go back over the whole wall without reloading the roller to blend the paint evenly. The method then is to apply lots of paint to the wall, then immediately back roll over the area without additional paint to completely smooth out the paint. Many people try to overspread the paint, making the paint film too thin in places, resulting in a patchy, poor hiding paint job. The secret to avoiding this is to reload your roller frequently so you're not spreading out the paint too far. You're putting on the correct amount of paint if the paint film appears to be a consistent thickness and covers the old color evenly without dripping or sagging. Always finish to the end of a wall before stopping. This prevents lap marks where the paint had already dried. Also, finish to the end of a wall before switching to another can of paint in case there is a slight variation in color between cans. As the paint dries, especially if it's latex paint, it will appear patchy until it dries completely. Resist the temptation to go back over the area while it is drying. Last to be painted are the baseboards, once the walls are totally dry. To keep paint off the carpet along the edge of the baseboards, use carpet masking strips. Remember to use the technique of jiggling the brush at the beginning of each stroke to fan out the bristles of the brush to paint a straight edge where the baseboard meets the wall. You will find that over most colors and surfaces, when using our best paints, applied with our best brushes and rollers, only one coat of paint will be needed to give you a smooth, durable, beautiful finish. If you are applying a second coat of paint, be sure to allow the first coat to thoroughly dry, according to label instructions, so that the first coat won't wrinkle under the second.
Color your world. The expert's choice. Your choice. The best choice.